Lee, on behalf of Centre Court 360, uh, these webinars, it's an uh, absolute pleasure to be here. And I really, really appreciate um, being able to, to offer these webinars through Centre Court. And uh, yeah, just welcome. Uh, as, as I always do, would love to know where you are checking in from. I think we've got Canada in the house. I see you absolute legend, double thumbs up. Uh, what else have we got in the house? And I wanna see, uh, have we got players, coaches, uh, parents, um, and also um, clients uh, as well. So I know we've got, I can see a couple of familiar names there as well. So um, please just let me know in the chat box Get active, let me know uh, where you are checking in from. I love it when I see all the uh, different parts of the world pop up. Obviously, lots of New Jersey uh, folks in the house. So really, really appreciate that. I know this is Sunday night um, or potentially even if there's any Aussies checking in, it'd be Monday morning. Um, but Boston, I love it. Bermuda, fantastic. Thank you. Another Emma. Appreciate that. Um, fantastic. So uh, thank you again for being here, everybody. Virginia's in the house. New Jersey's in the house. Fantastic. All right. Love it. So uh, as you can imagine, with a topic like uh, anxiety and embracing anxiety, I think, you know, there's always that 10 minutes before a webinar where I think about all the things that could go wrong uh, and have gone wrong over the last 12 months. Uh, anything from I've been hacked, um, no sound. Uh, I've pulled the chat box up and everyone can, can't see my presentation because of the chat box. And I think the difference is that at least now I feel like I have some strategies and each time I do it, it gets easier. But I still have that moment in my stomach where I think, oh my goodness, is anyone going to show up? <laughs> so that's first of all from my heart um, to everyone that's that's made the time. I really, really appreciate it. And obviously, you know that uh, the way that I run my Centre Court webinars, uh, you will be given practical strategies. One of those is um, an anchor. We're gonna be doing some anchoring tonight. And that is what helps me um, get myself in the zone to be able to do this webinar. So, um, so I'm firing off my little anchor. So the technology goes really, really well uh, as I cross over and share my screen. Let's get going. Embracing anxiety, don't believe everything you think. That is where we're at. And I now have got um, my screen here and I'm what mindfulness means to you. So what I'm doing at the moment is I'm just taking the word anxiety and I'm and I'm saying, okay, what's the opposite of anxiety? Mindfulness. So when you think of mindfulness or when you picture mindfulness, um, I'd love uh, for you to share in the chat box. Uh, what, what do you picture? What do you think of um, when you think of this word? And remember, with all of my webinars, you cannot get it wrong as long as you participate. So there's no such thing as a wrong answer. I guarantee that much. Uh, but I would love to see everybody's answers. When you think of mindfulness, what what is it that you actually think of? And I'll um, I'll just pull up... Um, pull up this chat being in the moment yeah fantastic I used to think definitely um of that you know you almost had to go onto a beach or you had to go on a retreat or lock yourself away for a couple of days and and do a bit of uh the zen and and so forth when I think of mindfulness and of course uh over the years this is completely inaccurate um so I'm not saying you can't experience that when you do get away but most important message that I wanted to kick off this webinar is just in saying that uh you certainly can um, learn it as a skill mindfulness and with regards to that you can experience it every single day there's certainly everyday activities that we do um, where we can practice mindfulness um, from washing the dishes uh, to drawing, reading, just being in, in the moment. So, um, so thank you for sharing. Um, but we don't need to all go away on a beach retreat and, and a zen to be able to experience mindfulness. So um, what's this webinar going to cover? Those of, who've seen my webinars with Centre Court before, we always cover the same four things. Um, let's start with the motivation. What's your motivation and, and your why? So I want you to reflect on this. But I wanted to, there's so many different ways I could have gone with this webinar, but here are the three biggest challenges that I see with my clients and my, my athletes. 
Um, number one is obsessive overthinking. So um, it's like they just can't stop their mind. It affects their sleep. It affects then, of course, their training and, and their matches. It's um, it's a real big one. Maybe you can you can relate to it. Um, phone obsession. So this uh, with phone obsession, what I'm seeing more and more is just um, the inability to be able to switch switch it off. Um, so we'll talk about some strategies around that. And then the final one that I want to cover um, and talk about is the actual presence of um, coping with pressure. Uh, so I've only ever met, well, three athletes in 30 years of coaching where I used to say you have to step up and win for Australia today. Otherwise, um, the pressure would be too great. So if I said that to the majority of my players, 98%, 99% of all my players, um, that focus on the win or focus on having to to beat Russia to get into the next group world final uh it really wasn't a great um way to frame to frame something there was like I said only three athletes that could actually handle that outcome pressure and of course we're all under outcome pressure especially when we compete in our sports so I think one thing I want you to all walk away with today is that um, we're going to go through one of the biggest strategies I use all the time which is anchoring to help give you more tools and strategies so that we, of course that we don't sabotage our own success um, and really get in our get in our own way of um, of being successful that's that's the ultimate fear so they're three of the biggest things that I really see uh, um, unfortunately too often it, it really is only getting worse the stat that it, um, I was reading in preparation for this webinar is that 25 percent of teen athletes do suffer from um, mental health issues with anxiety disorder being on the rise and 30% for female athletes. But honestly, I think the, the number is actually a lot higher than that. So I think it's something we have to really be mindful of. Um, we'd love to hear from you. What, you know, what's one thing that you'd love to get out of this webinar? I know a couple of people have already given Rob um, pre-planned questions, but if you do have any questions, please uh, put them in the chat box. All right, so what are the promises of this webinar? Uh, we're going to do a mindfulness exercise to stay in the present. Um, I'm going to um, just talk very briefly on that because uh, it could be a whole webinar on phone obsession, but how you can put it in your control. And we're going to talk about how do you compartmentalize, and I'm going to share some stories around that. That's the promise of this webinar uh, so that you could be fully engaged in your training and, and help you win more in your sport. So together they changed the um, crows from black to white and pushed them from the front of the gut to the to the back and the base of the spine so that she felt like she had wings. Um, so they actually ended up turning into white butterflies. Um, one of the coolest stories around the power of the mind because as we, we all know, and I'm sure that we've all experienced, how intrinsically our thoughts affect our body um, and that's it, that's so intrinsically linked that if you these little techniques of shifting things through visualization changing colors changing the intensity um is a, a lot of the work that i do and have had a lot of success uh, with Emma, could, could you repeat what you said because you were a lot cut off when you were just describing the the first and then you were cut off so if you could just All right again sorry yep Yep, I can uh, repeat that, no problem. Um, so again, just apologies about the, the tech uh, in advance here, but essentially what I was saying um, with this certain uh, client, I've had a lot of success is where does anxiety live in the body? So where does, where does the player feel it or the athlete feel it? And so many times it is um, somewhere around the gut and then being able to even just visualize and put your, your hands on the gut and um, then get the player or the athlete to tell you what that feels like. Perhaps it is a color or perhaps it's an intensity or a feeling. And then um, changing it from black to white and changing crows into butterflies for this particular client. Again, it's all very individualized. Uh, but that's where I've had a lot of success in terms of just accepting. Remember, this webinar, is a, that's a story to share about how we embrace anxiety. We can't push it away, we can't stop it. Um, so how do we embrace it? And then of course, uh, use practical strategies um, that work for certain players in certain ways to be able to you know, do the best they can to compete under pressure. So just a cool little story there from one of my mentors and I use this technique now um, all the time um, when I'm working with my, my athletes. 
All right, so we've got five strategies for you, as we always do. Um, the first strategy is actually, let's just talk about anxiety, which is the main purpose of this webinar. And if we think about what anxiety actually is, it's born from bouncing definitely between the past and the future. So the mind is continuously bouncing between, oh, you know, I had to play that, that, that um, player last time and this is what happened. Or, but, you know, maybe that player's been injured, so I'm not sure what the future's going to hold, but, you know, maybe they've been tra training harder since the injury. But it, this mind bouncing between the past and the future is one of the best definitions that I've sort of heard for it. And so the body is in the present, but you've got to ask yourself, where is your mind? Um, so consequently, even the tagline for this webinar being, uh, um, don't believe everything you think. Because let's be honest, even, uh, you know, your perception of something that happened in the past, especially I've seen a lot with, with tennis players being, being my chosen sport that I work with a lot with um, tennis athletes, that they their reality of, of what actually happened in a match is not off, is quite often not what actually happened. Um, so, that, you know, when I show them the, the statistics, which obviously don't lie, the facts, um, they're really quite surprised that maybe they didn't make as many errors as they thought or the other way around. It was, um, it, it can happen both ways, but just remember that the perception of the past is, is often um, skewed, especially with athletes. And then so much of anxiety is out of our control because we're worried about what's going to happen in the future or a match that you've got to, um, that you've got to come up against or somebody that you've played against for years. So I just wanted to, to cover off that because I really love that, that definition, um, the worry of the past and the future, but your body's actually in the present, but, but where's your mind? So we're going to be, of course, covering strategies on how we can uh, all do a better job of that. And I love this one too, just with regards to, as we mentioned earlier, mindfulness. So is our mind actually full of stuff or being mindful, which of course is lovely definition of it is is just there the awareness that emerges through paying attention on purpose i'll just say that so one of the um one of the uh most successful tools and there's so much research to support this around uh being able to cope better with anxiety is through the practice of mindfulness um make no mistake about that it is 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 such an important tool uh, as I said, again, it, it's a practice skill and it's in everyday activities, eating, driving, walking, drawing, drinking, dishwashing, journaling, um, and it does have the ability to rewire the brain. So I'm going to share one of the um, techniques that, that I use um, a lot with my players when we get to the tactics of the webinar today uh, to really um, just, you know, just again, reinforce the, um, the health benefits of, of mindfulness. There's so many and there's so much research out there. So I'm sure I'm, I'm preaching to the converted that the fact you're even on this, uh, on this, on this um, webinar, but like any tennis skill, it can be learned, but only when practiced. So that's, that's the most important part of this strategy. Uh, the third strategy is the big four with regards to our thinking. So what are the, what are the big four things that our thinking goes through? Um, before we can, you know, to be able to help us practice in, in um, being in the moment and being more mindful is that something happens. Um, the classic example is when you're driving and somebody's, you know, you think they've cut you off in the traffic or perhaps if you're, you're an, a, a, an athlete, maybe you've seen your parents uh, um, driving, you've got a perception of what you think happened. Uh, then there's, you either let it go or, or you don't. Uh, then you either accept it or you don't. And we know what happens when you don't accept things or a bad line call, for example, before you can actually be in the present. So the, the, the mind, people much smarter than me in, in the neuroscience says that the big four thinking goes through those four steps. So perception and then let it go, which obviously through the practice of mindfulness is much easier to, be, to then accept it. And you think about sport and you think about tennis again um, or even a sport, I know we've got some lacrosse people online here, the faster you can get through those first three things, um, you've, you've, the referee's made a bad decision, the quicker that you can let it go and then accept the decision, 
uh, that's going to help you return to the present as quick as you can. Uh, so going through those steps, learning how to go through those steps, um, having practical strategies to get to that uh, third step as quick as you can is no is definitely the key um, to how we can do, all do a better job of embracing anxiety because we can't push it away. We have to accept it and uh, and embrace it and and acknowledge the fact that yeah you're playing in a final and it is important, but then you've got to let that go as quick as you can. The outcome of that. Um, that's strategy three. Uh, strategy four with regards to social media. Uh, the, the strategy here that we've gone gone with is called the, the persona or the false self. Um, so I, I love this. Uh, I'm a big, coming from Melbourne, I love my coffee. Um, absolutely love, um, you know, this, this idea, you know, that when we put a picture up on social media or, um, you know, we, we, we put out to the world, you know, what we think uh, that, you know, what we, how do I say this politely? Um, uh, we put out this persona that, of course, is not necessarily real in terms of what's going on for us in, inside, which, of course, especially for our teen athletes as well, um, and actually not just teens, anyone. Um, our reality, of course, is more like the, the picture on the right of what's actually going on for us at any particular time. So... We, you know, what that does, of course, is it breeds, and I've been reading a lot about this lately, this, you know, the imposter syndrome, uh, which is sort of that nagging inner voice saying that you don't deserve your achievements um, because, and this is the biggest, again, this could be a whole webinar just on, on phone obsession, um, because we keep comparing ourselves to everyone else when really what they're putting out into the world is not necessarily their true self. Um, it's just the persona. So that's just something, the strategy to be mindful of. And when we get to the tactic, I'll, um, I'll share some really cool um, little things that you can do to help your athletes, or if you are an athlete, to make sure that we can help be in the present and not always searching for that phone or being obsessed um, about, oh, that player's doing this or that, you know, they're, looks like they're training really hard or well, who actually knows and assumptions are definitely um, not something the rabbit hole once we start making assumptions you can um, lose a lot of sleep over it and finally strategy number five is compartmentalize uh, this you know there's so many things um, that we could talk about with regards to coping skills under pressure but when I really chunked it down into what I've had the most successful with with teams and athletes it's their ability to compartmentalize because at the end of the day stuff is going on in your life and again you can't just push it to the side but imagine if you had a strategy to be able to just chunk it into pieces whether it be your one hour or two hour training session or your match day um, so being able to do that is definitely a way for you to embrace anxiety to accept it, whatever is going on for you right now, just accept where you're at. Even if you maybe have been injured and you're coming back and these are players that you normally beat, if you can, the quicker you can accept it, remember the big four thinking, the easier it will be for you to be able to compete under pressure. So with regards to compartmentalize, I'm gonna tell a quick story around that um, about a team that I worked with. Um, a, a Scottish netball team um, called the Sirens. And so we, we went through this whole um, day where we unpacked their, their values and uh, they, they were the can-cans, um, which stood for commitment, ambition, and we flipped the N upside down to unity. And what we did off those values is they then created the behaviours. So one of the behaviours based on the word commitment was called um, white line fever. And so there was on the practice court, there was this, this big chunky, like a really thick sort of white line, um, sort of when they came out of their dressing room before they'd step onto their training court, which is obviously their home match court as well. And so uh, we had this principle that once you stood over the white line, you sort of, you left your shit at the door, so to speak. Um, and anyone that didn't, so we had this backpack and it was full of sort of bricks, basically. And if someone was carrying on 
and on the court and you could sense that they were agitated by something that you know wasn't quite um right or something that had carried over from last week's training and hadn't let it go they had to go back over the white line put the backpack on and then of course take it off um so you know a, 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 almost a physical metaphor for leave leave your stuff at the door compartmentalize because once you step over that line the more you can be in, in the present uh the better and uh, i just loved that story um and you know we ended up having a uh, a mantra which was no history no limits because it was their second ever season so it was a brand new sort of team in the um in the elite sort of um league league over there so just another example a practical example of a strategy that we did to help compartmentalize it hey now I, now i'm here to practice now i'm here to, to train now i'm here for the match court so i got through those five strategies and i only lost my screen three times i am embracing the anxiety of technology with this webinar today so hopefully you are all still with me and uh, normally I would ask a lot more questions and get you interacting in the chat box. Um, so uh, just to see how many of you are still with me and awake, what uh, was strategy number two? What was strategy number two? See if first person to write it in the chat box, see if you can remember out of the five strategies that we just covered, just to, to check that you're, uh, you're all still with me. And remember, you can't really get it wrong because I'm, I'm not, I dare not open the chat box just, just in case we freeze. All right. So uh, I can see it flashing though. That means that there's an answer in there. So thank you. Thank you. All right. So let's get to the fun part of the webinar. Uh, the fun part for me being a mindset coach. So I'm definitely not a psychologist. Um, there's great value in psychologists. And certainly if you, um, you know, uh, suffering from um, anxiety at a certain level. I think there's a lot of value in, in seeing a psychologist with regards to a mindset coach, which is what I am. And what I do is I provide you with practical strategies that help you in the future. Uh, so that's what we're going to be doing now. So as you can pretty much imagine, the first strategy that we're all going to do is this practical exercise of present breathing, and it's called square breathing. So we're all gonna do, do that together. Um, so what I'd love even just right now is, uh, I think I'm really gonna enjoy this too uh, myself. So make sure you, your arms aren't crossed or your legs aren't crossed. Make sure you're nice and in a comfortable position. And I'm gonna talk you through um, two rounds of the, of the square uh, with, with your breathing. Um, if you feel comfortable, you know, I recommend closing your eyes. And then I'd love you to do two rounds of square breathing by yourself. And then we'll just reflect on, on how we feel. And then I can talk to you about some of the benefits of, um, of breathing. Remember just one thing with regards to mindfulness, if you haven't done any of this before, when a thought comes into your mind, which I promise you, even in this next exercise, it probably will, uh, just no judgment and just sort of let it go so if you can imagine it sort of coming in one one ear and maybe passing out the other ear um but no judgment just just let it go and try and come back to the sound of my voice as quickly as you can or when you're doing it on your own um for the 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 round after that uh then uh uh just come back to the sound of your your breathing and the feeling of the air coming in through your nose and out all right so okay so together we're going to follow the sequence around the square okay it looks like this all right so take a deep breath in one two three four and out one two three four and in, one, two, three, four, and out, one, two, three, four, and in, one, two, three, four, and out one, 
two, three, four, and in. One, two, three, four, and out. One, two, three, four, and two more rounds on your own now. And when you're ready, just gently coming back into the webinar now. And perhaps there's a word that came to mind or a feeling in that exercise. I'd love to see that in the chat box. So if you feel open just to sharing how that exercise um, felt, I would love to, uh, to read, read that. Fantastic. Fantastic, excellent. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, beautiful, some great words there. Um, so when you actually breathe in, uh, it, it does increase um, your heart rate. And when you exhale, it decreases your heart rate. So just remember that if you can make your exhale longer, especially um, in tennis, say right before you're about to, to bounce the ball before you serve, um, so before you step up to the line, if you could just do a longer exhale, that is definitely going to help you prepare yourself to be in, in the present moment to play the point. Um, or before you go out onto the match, if you're subbing in and out, uh, just being able to take that big, long exhale. Use If you want, raise the shoulders and then just let it go. But a great rule of thumb is six seconds in and six seconds out, or just make that exhale a little bit longer as well. Um, is a great way, uh, is a great exercise to um, to remember to add into your routine of, of, um, of your, uh, re whatever routine it is that, whatever sport you're in. But square breathing is a, a really good one. Um, the other one is um, for breathing is just having an object. Um, perhaps it's the object of, you know, it could be a um, squash ball or a shuttlecock or whatever your ball of choice is but just objects um, focus. So just remember paying attention on purpose. So just looking at the ball and looking at the texture, perhaps you're feeling the texture, but again, another one that I use a lot um, to help players with mindfulness. And it doesn't need to be, I'm not saying I want you to become big yogis. <laughs> uh, it doesn't, mindfulness to help with anxiety doesn't need to be for a long time. Even just doing that exercise, which, I don't even know how long that would have taken, but not long, maybe less than two minutes. Uh, notice the words that and what you felt. I know that I feel a lot better now um, in this webinar as well. So uh, there's so many cool techniques that you can use. So um, certainly there's so much out there, uh, but that's one that I've had a lot, of, a lot of success with because especially with athletes, they can follow the square um, or you could change it into a different shape as well. Uh, so um, I hope you enjoyed that one. That's tactic number one. Tactic number two, again, I, I, I do think this could be an entire webinar, but I just wanted to share a couple of things with regards to, to the mobile phone. Um, number one is, uh, I wonder if anyone's aware, but the biggest um, stress that uh, especially athletes um, have, and even non-athletes as well, is when the phone notification goes off. So when they see that little number, um, 
on Facebook or um, on any of those social emails, perhaps for some of the um, people in my generation. Uh, and the notifications, obviously, these days, I shouldn't say obviously, but are often attached to the, uh, to the watch um, that vibrates and then the phone vibrates and you'll see it a lot of the time, even when people are going out for coffee or um, going out for lunch, the phone will be on the table. And especially now all the menus, of course, with in the COVID world, everyone's scanning the, the, the QR reader. And so the phone being on the table and, and the notifications going, it's like you can't help yourself, but all of a sudden you've clicked on a notification and you're down the rabbit hole um, into that world of imposter syndrome and you're not good enough and you're comparing yourself to others and um, it never feels great. So here, here's, remember we're in the tactical section here. So the, the number one tactic uh, with regards to that is to create folders. So if you can encourage your athletes to put all their social media in a folder of course, what the notifications can still be on, but you can hardly see them. So there's not that temptation to, to click on it. And TFT is technology-free training. Uh, it's amazing how many times I see athletes, especially on the tennis court, check, check their phones. And, and unless it's an emergency and you cover that off with your coach, there's just no room for it. There's no need for it. And so one of the uh, one of the most effective um, tools that I have with regards to that has just been the uh, the airplane mode. So just clicking on the airplane mode when you're in training shuts off that uh, the vibration, the notifications, and allows you to be in that moment. Um, so um, we've got. Um, I've just opened the chat box. My coach had me turn uh vibrations off on my watch because you know so i was distracted yeah thank you for being honest and, and sharing that uh, i see it time and time again so i think it is really important that we uh you know that we create those environments to be able to help our help our players and our athletes to manage it and one thing that um two other stories just on this and then i'll move on the first one uh is um um, when we played Junior Fed Cup in Malaysia and we had a rule, no mobile phones at all on the table because of, you know, not being present with each other in conversation and all the other countries had their, you know, all the players always had their phones on the table at mealtime and, you know, it wasn't easy. They had to talk to each other. Um, but I love, I love that, um, you know, in relation to the, the culture that we sort of created and definitely helped with our success that week. Uh, and the other one is um, treating it like a hobby. So if you can, the one thing, you know, with this practical tactic here is to take control. So if you could even, I mean, you can't, social media is not going anywhere. There's nothing, our athletes are always going to be using it and, and be on it. So imagine if that you could help them take control and almost treat it like a hobby. Um, you know, certainly social media time versus just being on it constantly and so therefore that that false self um is always always there and always comparing themselves and it's just a recipe for for um being less present when you're actually in the moment of training and competing uh but it could be a whole one hour webinar just on those strategies alone uh but maybe there's one or two ideas there that you could help your athletes with or maybe if you're an athlete you could um you could consider some uh, tfts all right, and finally, our last tactic for the webinar is by far the um, that is the Malaysian team. By the way, actually, the story I just told you. Then um, we ended up winning Asia Oceana uh, in 2018 and, and went on to finish six in the World Championships in Budapest. And so those same same rules applied. And a bit like the Scottish netball team, we were the incredible raging elephants, which stood for improvement, respect, and enjoyment. So one of our rules, of course, was the mobile phone. And I definitely took the phones off them overnight. Otherwise, I didn't think, I didn't believe that they'd get a full night's sleep. Um, all right. So uh, anchoring and affirmations was another thing that was, that that I have probably, since I learned about it myself um, through a, an emotional intelligence course that I did, I've used this strategy the, the most with my clients. Um, and that's to do with coping with pressure. I know one of the questions pre-webinar was about how do um, one player gets, 
incredibly sick and ner- because of nerves and it's so so common to have that um that gut-wrenching sort of sick feeling uh, before competition and so anchoring and affirmations is one of one technique that I, I love and I use all the time. So what is it to help with that? Because, I mean, we, I'm sure we all agree the mind and the body, as we mentioned, intrinsically linked. So if we accept it, we embrace anxiety. Um, we say, hey, I'm feeling nervous. We name it even, hey, I'm feeling this in my, in my stomach. Uh, and then we pick an anchor. Um, so an anchor is a physical trigger. Um, so it could be um, a necklace, um, it could be a rubber band on your wrist that, that you flick. Um, I always use my, my three fingers, my thumb, my index finger, and my middle finger. When they touch together, that's the anchor that I use. Uh, in tennis, it could be um, the dampener on the racket, um, could be the, the base of your lacrosse or your hockey stick, pressing your hand into the, into the base uh, as, as some examples. Um, and again, jewelry. So, um, with with this particular team we went and got gemstones so you can see we've got all gemstone affirmation cards here um so for example aquamarine um my mind is calm like a glass ocean so that was the the affirmation that went with that that particular gemstone um the onyx um i am powerful uh the ruby i am courageous um anything that um can help you stay in the moment that remind the, the anchor reminds you to fire off your affirmation so there's just some examples there uh such as i can do it i belong here i am ready and i love competing so again what we're doing is we're saying we're, we're embracing it but when we fire off that anchor we're helping ourselves stay in the present moment we're helping um, ourselves be able to step onto that match court. When you step onto that match court, nothing else matters but that moment. Um, I worked with another um, client who um, in her mid-50s wanted to run the New York Marathon. And one of the biggest things we had to ha- had to help her with because she was had so much anxiety about not being able to, you know, what if I don't finish, um, which is a real fear, I'm sure, many people. But it was we had her affirmation was about one step at a time. How do you finish a marathon? One step at a time. So I can take one step at a time was her affirmation. Um, and she had um, that her anchor was her watch. Um, so uh, by far one of the most successful strategies in terms of anchoring and affirmations that I've ever, ever used. So I hope you hope you enjoyed those three strategies. So we have breathing, uh, we had the um, folders for the notifications, um, your, your, you taking control of your social media and anchoring and affirmations as our three practical strategies. All right. So we're hitting the game plan, so I can um, take 10 minutes of, of questions at the end. Uh, the game plan today is pretty simple. For a bronze medal, give the mindfulness a go or teach it to someone else or to one of your players or one of your clients. So just give it a go. Two minutes, that's all it takes. But remember, it's a learned skill when it's practiced. So um, add that, uh, begin to add that into your, to your routine. Um, to get a silver medal, uh, really consider with your athletes or if you are an athlete again technology free training uh, especially training that's a big one where I see the players just on the change they're just quickly checking their phone um, and really it it takes them away from um, the moment and for a gold medal uh, commit to an anchor and an affirmation for six months so minimum six months um, and um, that is how you win your your game of life. Um, if you'd like a, a, a personalized um, visualization, um, that's certainly something, again, I'll put my email up at the end here. You can definitely reach out. Um, I tailor them to, to your sport and, and your players. So um, that's definitely um, something that I can uh, tell you more about. Uh, and also, if there are any tennis players on this call, um, we have Master Your Mindset, um, which is uh, just an online course with heaps of visualizations on it for tennis players. And um, promo code, I'll put it in the chat box, but it's just CC for Centre Court 2021. And that, um, I think it's like 40, 40 bucks. So bargain. All right. I know uh, right at the end, uh, Rob will probably give you a bit more information about this, but what's next? Uh, so on the fourth, uh, sorry, the, uh, actually I need to double check that date. 
some reason I think I got the date. I might have written the date wrong there. I'll do that while I'm talking, but uh, uh, I'll double check that or Rob can maybe help me pop that March in the chat 4th. box. Yeah, I got it wrong. March 4th, I did get yeah. it wrong. I'm going to put but, the registration link in the uh, in the chat. Thanks, Rob. Uh, it's, it's probably summarizes the <laughs> Some of those early technological issues um, that I got the date wrong. I'm embracing it. You see, uh, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here in the U.S. Uh, but essentially, um, remember, only 3% of the population actually even set goals. Only 1% of them write it down. But the one thing that they all all miss, I promise you, is no one connects the why, uh, the why to the goal setting process. All right, so there's my um, there's my details and there's my my email. If anyone again is interested in one of those um, uh, recordings, the visualization recordings, as I stop sharing my screen, I made it. I made it. All right, so uh, thank you for staying with us uh, on on this webinar. I'd love to take some questions. Um, we've got about uh, ten minutes or so. Um, so I'd love if you if you feel like you want to unmute yourself and, and ask a question um, while I pull up the um, the chat box. I'll see if there's any questions in there um, or um, while I'm doing that. Does anyone want to unmute themselves and ask a question? All right. Okay. So let me have a look. What have we got? Uh, okay, um, question from Mustafa, thank you. When, how frequently during the course of a match do you use the anchor? Great question. Uh, what is the cue that now I need to use my anchor? Okay, so um, it, for tennis players um, specifically, um, you get obviously 20 seconds between points. So within your between point routine, the first thing that you know generally I encourage is you turn away you're looking at your strings when you're fixing your strings you're thinking tactically and once you've finished thinking tactically so it's right before you're about to step up to the line or right before you're about to return serve that's when you fire off your anchor because you've already done your thinking hopefully your thinking is what you need to do better on the next point or what do you need to continue um, doing that's working then you don't want to be thinking because you're trusting that the body knows what to do that you know how to play the points so that's when you fire it off and then you go through your ritual. So your ritual, like brushing your teeth, uh, would be bouncing the ball three times if that's what your ritual is. Or on your return of serve, it might be bounce, 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 split. Um, so for other people, non-tennis players, when would you fire off your anchor? Would be right before you're about to step onto the, the field or right um, when there's been a break, you've, got a, you've had a timeout and you're about to go back onto the court. You, you, your coach maybe has given you the gameplay and you've, you've done all your thinking. Now you're firing it off so that you can um, then go ahead and, uh, and execute and trust your body. Um, what is the cue that I now, sorry, what is the cue that now I need to use my anchor? So use it as much as you can. <laughs> Use it as frequently as you can. Um, that's that's the cue. So right before the, the ritual, hopefully um, that, that made sense. Um, I'm just seeing if there's any other questions. Okay, Nicholas, uh, what do you think about when you're close to winning instead of thinking about the outcome? Yeah, a strategy to do this. So, so common. Uh, again, the finish line is right there and you can see it and you it's so hard, again, that anxiety to not think into the future. Uh, but one of the biggest things that you, you must do um, is, again, how fast can you come back to the present? So one of the things I always say to my players is take the emotion out of the score. So even if you're – a lot of people go, um, oh, I'm, I'm six one five two up, right? <laughs> so the minute you say up or the minute you say down, you've added an emotion into the score. So you're better off just saying it's it's um it's six two it's five two like non emotively, or even when you're telling your coach what the score is, it, it was three six four six. Um, so again, in um, um, hockey, if you're we've got some field hockey people, I think on the call. So again, what, what the score is? It's one all. If it's you know, or there's two minutes left, you you need to say right. There, there's time for us to whatever the tactic is, focus better on our defense or whatever it might be. But firing off that anchor to help you, anything you can do to help 
compartmentalize that white line fever stepping over that line and all you're thinking about is that present moment um embracing what, what what i call the mind monster as well great little exercise i've had a lot of success with with a lot of clients you have to embrace that voice that goes oh there's no way we can do this right embrace it now far right okay let's go what can i do about it what's within my control um so um hopefully there's some strategies in there that you can certainly play around with but thank, thanks for your question nicholas uh, next one from Al, do you find particular issues, focus, anxiety among different age groups, youth, high school, college? Honestly, <laughs> anxiety, I think is, uh, it, it, I see it across all age brackets. Um, I, I definitely think potentially um, because sometimes of the way that um, females are, are raised, or women are raised, um, I tend to see it more, you know, if, if there was a gender um, across the gender spectrum but again it's not not by much um, the guys still go through it as well so uh, I don't I, I'm seeing it unfortunately even younger and younger some of the clients that I'm working with um, are really experiencing suffering from really just this bounce between this past and this present and not being able to let it go and really affecting sleep People often ask me too, like, what's that my number one strategy for injury, like for recovery? It is sleep. It is sleep is still number one. You take as many ice baths as you want. Uh, but at the end of the day, when that phone's vibrating next to the bed, I mean, just like, that's just a disaster, recipe for disaster. Um, so put it out of the room, uh, get it well out of the way. But um, but yeah, I hope um, that was that was uh, useful. All right. I'm loving all these questions coming in. Team, thank you. Beautiful. All right. Um, we've got, uh, when I push my dampener, I remind, a yes, correct. When you push the dampener, for example, and make it specific. Don't just, don't just choose your strings because more the strings is when I'm thinking tactically. Um, so the dampener, make it like your right thumb or your left index finger. Okay. Uh, when you press that, that triggers the affirmation. Uh, to, reminds you to stay in the present as well. Um, all right, next question, how to switch off, uh, practice switching off uh, the technical when you're about to hit a short ball, just trust your training and hit the ball. Um, switch off, yep. Okay, so I'm not sure if that's a question or, but I like what you're saying. Yes, it's, it's, it's a form of switching off for sure. Um, and and trust trust your training absolutely. And then it, of course, if you've got uh, you know your, your contact zone is above your shoulder and you've got a certain grip and you're not having success above your shoulder, hopefully that's where your coach can step in and <laughs> help you there with um, with making some changes. But uh, but that's essentially I think what um, what you're asking. All right, Rob, we had a uh, question. Uh, right about athlete really struggling with anxiety even to the point yep the nausea wants to stay with the team advice for parents uh, so number one advice is I love that um, wants to stay with the team so the motivations there um, I see this time and time again I had one I had one player where her anxiety was so bad that in her warm-up she told me that she to get rid of her anxiety she had to hit the ball onto the to the back fence on the full for 10 minutes so of course I look like the crazy coach because I was like okay if that's what you feel like you need to do let's do it and of course it, she started every match for love or for one down <laughs> because it, she's missing along so um so I'm not sure whether that actually really did work so I I think you're better off going to the to the cause to the root cause um which is is, is it too much thinking about the past or too much thinking about the future? So that's step one. If it's past and there's some deep, deep rooted stuff going on there, then I definitely think a sports psych is, is really useful. If it's worrying so much about the future and performance anxiety, then practical strategies such as anchoring would be where, where I would start. Um, visualizations, short six minute visualizations where she's already going through all that anxiety. Um, check out on Instagram, 100%. I've had so much success with Mind Monsters where you, you you give it a name. You know that voice inside your head that says, oh, you suck, you'll never be good enough, you're not as good as this player, blah, blah, blah. Draw it, name it, and then what's its positive intent? There's always a positive intent of a Mind Monster. 
um, even, you know, maybe it cares. That's why it's telling you that it's, not, you know, you know, good because it cares so much that it's actually having this conversation with you. So you can go through that whole process or I'm happy to shoot me an email and I can um, work through the, the My Monster story with you. But check it out on Instagram. It's a friend of mine from the UK that started it. Uh, and it's uh, some of the My Monsters, like even I've had um, one of my clients about two weeks ago, she drew hers and it was called the Joy Stealer. Uh, and it was this big rain cloud like raining on top of her tennis it was um so cool so they're things that you just got to bring it out you got to bring it out if you try and suppress it it'll come out unresourcefully such as nausea um you know i'm a huge believer in headaches as well you know top of if you feel it more on the top of your head is the pressure on yourself to perform um the back of the head is like you're underperforming and then if you've got one in the front, it's like you don't want to see or you don't want to know what's ahead. So you get this intense sort of headache in, in the front part of your, 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 you feel it in your body. So being able to, again, to tap into your body, where do you feel it? What color is it? Does it have any intensity? And then shifting those things to embrace it are all exercises that I'd highly recommend. Um, and hopefully that was, um, that was useful. So thanks Rob for, um, for bringing that one, that one in, uh, another email question. What's the best way to get rid of butterflies, anxiety before a serve? So, uh, often the anxiety comes from the score. So again, remember being able to, a lot of people in the between point routine as well in tennis, they call the score out when right before they're about to play the point, like stupid, don't do that. <laughs> think about the score the minute the point is over so the quicker you remember you can go through the big four thinking and you can let it go and accept okay it's 30 40 so there's pressure now on for me because i'm serving and i you know i've I have hardly made a first serve so call the score early in your routine then do your thinking what do you need to do better toss your ball up higher stretch more whatever whatever it is then fire off your anchor and your affirmation, go through your ritual, you're not thinking about anything, and then hopefully your body will toss it higher if that's what you need to to adjust that. Um, but accept accept it. I think butterflies, um, you know, make them something, you know, whatever the client's into, but make the butterflies pretty. Make them big, give them wings. But remember, it's mainly in the gut. And in and tennis and in most sports, what's the first thing that happened? You stop moving your feet your feet become like concrete. Um, so may, and maybe, you know, Candice, maybe there's things you could do to get the body going there, right? So you can, because it's, it's you know, even in the arms, right? So um, so what I'm, I'm thinking is, is really, um, to, to really embrace is, is, the, is the key message here. Um, and what else can you call it? So, yep, accept the anxiety. It, it's just my butterflies. And they're actually angels and they've got wings and they're white and they're on the base of my spine and they're helping me take action because remember courage is where action lives when you when you take a step forward um, i do another visualization where i have people stand up and actually have them take steps within the visualization forward because what's <clears throat> when we have anxiety what do we do procrastinate we don't do anything you know that difficult conversation that you said you were going to have you still haven't had it right yeah got to take action um, accept it and embrace it. Um, so, ah, beautiful. Nice. That was your question. Love it. Um, all right. Uh, what's the Instagram account that you've heard? Uh, I, um, uh, I think it's just mine. I'll put it in the chat box. Um, but if you just Google it, uh, mind monsters, right? Check it out uh, on Instagram. Um, yeah, I think it's I think it's just that. Uh, thanks, Rob. Rob's already on it. Look at that; he's already done it. Uh, so let me just pop in the chat box as well a couple of those things that I mentioned earlier. Um, let's just throw that up again. So the um, master your mindset. There's the link to that, and uh, just for tonight only. CC twenty twenty one. It's just open um, for twenty four hours. Um, brings it down to 40 US dollars. So heaps of visualizations. It's got a whole between point routine uh, and Rob's put in there, the, the meet, meet the mind monsters. There you go. Um, but um, that's the ACE coach master your mindset. And of course, 
uh, remember that was one hour of our life that we'll never get back. I am extremely grateful that my computer recovered itself and we were able to get through that webinar. So thank you for staying on. Um, and I thank you, Anne. I appreciate it. And can, I can see your beautiful smiles. Imagine if everybody else just turned on their camera just for like three seconds and do your sport. So if you're tennis, you could give me a volley. If you're uh, lacrosse, you could give me a... Imagine if everyone just turned on their cat. Mustafa, love it. Oh, he's giving me a volley or a high five. I'm not sure. I love it. I'd love everyone to see everyone smiles. But anyway, we do the best we can with the skills we have. Oh, what? You like it, Ed. I like it. So, Rob, thank you so much. On behalf of Centre Court, we made it. We made it. And, uh, oh, basketball. Ow, love it. Thank you. Fantastic. Well, I appreciate everyone's time. Um, you know, again, we, we, we made it. I embrace the anxiety. Uh, fire off those anchors, whatever works for you. And, uh, you know, reach out if I can help with anything. Um, I can't wait to do the next one on the 4th on the 4th of March, not the 8th of March, um, on the 4th of March, all about goal setting. So um, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Rob, is there any uh, words of wisdom? No, thank you, Emma. What a, what a pro handling everything as usual. And I just put the, uh, the registration link for the March 4th um, in the chat and ho hope to see everybody there. Uh, I told Emma I know very, very little about tennis, but I work with kids all the, all the time and um, – really picked up a lot of great stuff um, and for myself as well. So thank you very much, everybody, and, uh, and have a great night. All right. Take care, everybody.